was from New York, so it's all New York. You know what I mean? But we just was in Grand Rapids because that's where they moved from when they left New York was to Grand Rapids. You know what I'm saying? So okay, so it just it was all natural. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, okay, so then the origin is there. I mean, that's the, you yeah. know what I'm saying. The, the yeah, the heritage, the lineage is there in terms of that. Yeah. In terms of that. In terms of that flavor. So, but sure. but even coming up, so coming up in Grand Rapids, though, I mean, like, what was the vibe like as far as as far as spitting, I mean, because I'm familiar somewhat with the Detroit scene and stuff like that, but was it different? Was it all linked up? Did you link up with Detroit and Flint and all those cats, or, or? Nah, I mean, I I just always just did what I was doing. You know, my brother, of course, uh, paved the way when he linked up with the clan. You know, what I'm saying that that definitely changed uh, the trajectory of what we can do with this shit. It kind of made it realistic for me. But I mean, as far as utilizing Grand Rapids or utilizing Detroit to catapult and influence what I'm doing. Musically, no. You know what I'm saying? As a man, yeah, maybe so much. Yeah, maybe, you know, yeah, coming up in them areas. But it didn't have a lot of impact on my music. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? My music probably came more so just from my brother and being around hip-hop, you know, my whole life. My father collected records. And um, he, he, he was somebody who was uh, a hip-hop fan before... <clears throat> like before there was a lot of hip hop fans because he was the guy that would go to the record stores and buy the vinyl of everything that came out that day. Back when other brothers like they fathers didn't do shit like that. You know, it's like my friends, they fathers worked in factories and shit like that. They probably have some old school shit. They probably have like some you know, some Motown type of shit. But my pop had like, you know, everything. G had like, you know, run DMC and public enemy and he had everything. You know what I'm saying? Like K R S one, Rock Kim, Big Daddy Kane. X Clan, like my dad, like in, like in my crib, my dad had like speakers, like like the fucking party speakers in every corner of the house. You know what I'm saying? With turntables and, and amp and the whole shit. Like you know, we'll get in trouble for playing the records when he at work, type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah. that was the kind of house I grew up in. So hip hop was always first and foremost in my crib. So I, I had no choice. I remember being a kid, um. In my dad's car, he was, he was like one of the first people I know, even to this day, I can't think of people doing it. It was taking the vinyl and converting it to cassette. So he was playing everything in the car that off the vinyl he put on cassette. So I'd be in the car, he got the system just banging, some LL or something like that. I'm in the back seat, like, boom, 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 like, just soaking it all up. Yeah, you know just, what I'm saying? right. So it was always a part of what I did, man. Like, he would make, like, flavor tapes for people in the hood and shit like that. Like, he'll have tapes, and he'd be like, EPMD on one side and LL on the other side. He's like, yo, somebody's gonna come through and pick this tape. I'm about to go. When they come, just give them the tape when they get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up like that, man. So, you know? so, so it's in your blood, man. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's been there since day, since day one. That's an interesting story, man. I mean, that's, because, you know, I, a lot of cats, you know, has had influences and stuff like that, but it's rare that it's, it's rare that it's the parent. You know what I mean? Even, I mean, I know you're, you're, you're not, you're, 20, you're like you're 33 or something, right? 33, 34? 34. 34. So, so yeah, that's so that's crazy. So, when you were coming up, like spitting wise, were you? I mean, is this were you spitting in Grand Rapids or were, like you know? Was, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, nah, I mean, um, growing, like growing up, rap was I, like like I said, man. I um, I take a lot of pride in what I do. Because I'm one of the guys who was rapping when it wasn't the popular thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been doing it out of the love for a long time before I started doing it professionally. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know nothing about the business when I was a kid. I just was doing it because I could do it. All my friends were playing basketball. But it was, you know, they was in the hood. You know what I mean? Getting to it a different kind of way. You know what I'm saying? But I was the only guy that had, like, this, 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 this bright, this wide-eyed vision. You know, this fucking far-fetched idea to go be a rapper for a living. You know what I'm saying? Like... I'm probably like the only person like me that I can think of from where I grew up at. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I had that idea and had that vision like my whole life, G. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about your brother's influence. I mean, because obviously that was there. That's what I wanted to go to next. I mean, yeah, I my brother's a real god, man. Like, he's a god that... um. So a little lot of dark men, you know what I mean? Big up. Yeah, a lot of dark men. Like, I was, um, I was just at home over the weekend, and I was sitting with my guy, and he was saying, like, our hood, where we grew up at, um... He was like, they taught, like, our hood taught everybody the cultural shit that they saw on TV from New York. Like, 
we brought Tim's through there. We brought Phillies through there. We brought, you know what I'm saying, Champion Hoods through there. We brought Big Fatigues through there. Like, we did that. With hockey jerseys with the, you know what I'm saying, with the Skellies. We did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but when I say we, I mean my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, he brought all of that style from New York to Grand Rapids. And then the neighborhood we grew up in, you know what I'm saying, they adapted to that. Like, you know, Razors Under the Tongue and all that type of shit. Like, that's the shit that that the neighborhood I'm from, they pioneered that in my city. So all that influenced that, like the 90s, when all that shit spread it through Grand Rapids and everybody was trying to be woo or, 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 you know what I mean, a boot camp click or, you know, like all that, like that style, my brother single-handedly put that through that town. And like the Grand Rapids is the second biggest city in Michigan and we're doing some amazing things there right now. We might get into that later. Yeah, but back then when I was a kid, you can imagine what it was like, you know what I mean? It wasn't that progressive, right? you know what I'm saying? As far as hip-hop is concerned, right. it wasn't a place for that. Like, I remember we didn't have a fucking, we didn't even have an FM radio station for a long time for hip-hop, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that, like, we damn near got that, like, the last 10 years, you know just, what I'm saying? It just, so it's like, it was just AM. right, growing up, you only heard hip-hop on the AM dial, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's how detached Grand Rapids was from, Having that access to hip hop, but my brother single handedly put that put that in play out there. You know what I'm saying? So did he grow up in? Was he? He was nah, up in, back and forth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. between Brooklyn, Westchester, back to Michigan, and back to Brooklyn. I would not see him for like a summer. He'll be he'll be in BK all summer. Then he'll come back, and then he'll you know go it's back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but so, people knew. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So so then um. So obviously that influence was there, and then so when did you start s spitting? Like, I mean, like seriously, seriously. Were you? I'm gonna tell you, black, like forever. Were you for said, real, man. You said forever. Like forever, but I'm gonna tell you, like, I, like, like the first rhymes I was spitting, I was spitting other people raps because, like, niggas ain't really had access to nothing like that. They didn't know, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, check this out, and I, you know, I spit like. Some tribe or something like that, like you know, you know, like, you know I, I was kick some five dog type of shit, like you know, I, I used to always spit the butter, you know what I'm saying? 1998, senior year, coffee yeah. hot, yeah, all the guys are only for the girls on that. I, I spit that rap all the time, but I like flip it and put different shit that we knew into the rap, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like right. I put my school in it, and I named girls that I knew from around my way. I would, I would freak that type of shit, right, right. and um, I was telling my cousins like, yo, we gonna do this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like. We used to take like uh, we used to take like like back when niggas had like boom boxes, right? We'd take the boom box and I'll go get a pair of cheap headphones, Radio Shack, and I'll break the headphones in half and I'll tape like the like the, the boom box had like two slits in it for like mics. Right. And I would take the headphones and tape the head I'll break it in half and tape the headphone speaker to the one mic output. And I rap into the other ones, record on the boombox. You know what I'm saying? So the boombox had like these engraved, like these little engraved slits in them, where you can just go yo 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 yo, and they'd be like a mic. So I put a blank tape, not even a blank tape. I probably take some shit out of my mom car and put the tape over, like stuff the stuff the tissue on top of the cassette and put the you know the tape on the top of it, pop it in the boombox. Take the headphones and put some like duct tape and tape it to one of the mics, and then I rap in the other mic. Just hit record, like yo, boom, and I'll be playing like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll have the headphones connected to my Walkman, so the Walkman is here. The headphone jack going to the Walkman, and then the headphones I break them in half and put one there, and I rap into the other. You on the crazy MacGyver shit, <laughs> man? That's the and that's you know like you came up on the grassroots. Part of this, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Just, I mean, just being a kid and wanting to do it. When you were a kid, you know, you don't have that, that access, but if it's in your heart, you're going to find a way to get to it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make it happen. Okay. And I started, I was doing them kind of tapes, and then when people come over my crib, I'll play them for them. They'll check out my new shit, and i play it. I think it's like, yo, what the fuck? This shit is crazy. But at the time, it was beautiful because you know how it is now. People think rap is a lick. And I tell people all the time, it's not a fucking lit, G. Like, you know what I'm saying? You probably better off taking that time and that money and getting you a laundromat or something, getting you a car wash or some shit, a barbershop or something. Nigga, I'm, I tell people that all the time. Like, take them, especially if you like a, you a guy and you in a situation and you can, you can afford to do certain things, don't be a rapper, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't recommend it unless you've been doing it and you got seeds in the field. Nigga, you just been your thing, then okay, that's different. But 
you just woke up one day, you came across some money and some and some inspiration, and you hype. Take that money and do something else. Like go find you a rapper, like you know what I mean, and invest in him or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like be more business minded is what I tell people now. You know what I'm saying? But back then, I was the guy that people knew. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do this shit for real one day. You know what I'm saying? Wow, man, that's 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 crazy. Just hearing that, like the the background, man. Like your your parents, like I mean, you just. It was in the house, man. That's the thing. It's in the house, it, it, yeah. was, it was in the house. So like, so you're coming up. I mean, and so your major influence. I mean, is you know you're doing your thing, and it's, it's it's so it's just interesting because you weren't you weren't going you weren't hanging out with that whole Detroit crowd, or I mean, you were doing your thing. Now, bro, I was a kid, man. I mean, like, you know I'm know saying, what I'm saying even as you like, as you got older, though. I mean, or anything like that. As I got older, I moved, I moved to Atlanta. Okay. I went when I went, when I graduated high school. I moved I moved down here. I moved to Atlanta. Okay. So I'm like 17 years old when I moved to Atlanta. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah, man. I really um I, that Detroit shit that that was just something that I was a fan of and I embraced it and I loved what the brothers was doing. But I never ran. I was I, I wasn't a young nigga in St. Andrews battling niggas like nah. I, was, I lived in Atlanta when I was old enough to get up and move around like okay. that. You know what I'm saying? So. I doubled back and went back up there later, you know what I'm saying? When I was older and I had more credentials, you know what I'm saying? But my style wasn't real in that space, you know what I'm saying? Okay, no, no, it that's wasn't. Good. That's good know? to know. I mean, because, you know, because I didn't want to, was, that's, that's one thing I was just wanted to see because, you know, people will lump, all right, Michigan, Jersey, you know what I'm saying? But nah, like, see, like is, Grand Rapids yeah. is two hours from Detroit. Right. I can do it, you know, jump on the road in 90 minutes, but, you know, theoretically, it's two hours from Detroit. Okay. But, that two hours is a whole nother fucking world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's like, so my, my brother started and what I've taken it, what I've taken this shit to, we created the relevance in that city, hands down. Like, that's not a hub for hip hop. Right. So, you think about hip hop, you gotta think about us. Like, we created that shit out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, Anybody from Detroit to tell you, they damn near, people from Detroit don't go to Grand Rapids, first of all. You know what I'm saying? That's firstly. And people from Grand Rapids used to go to Detroit only, like, the shop. You want to buy leather, you want to buy some jewelry, you want to do a certain thing, you want to go to a, a party, get a hotel, you kick it in the, in the D. Like, going to the D was like, that was the thing to do in Grand Rapids. You got money, you go to the D. You know what I'm saying? But on the flip side, Chicago is two and a half hours the other way. You know what I'm saying? So... Grand Rapids was in that strategic location where you can go to Detroit in two hours, you can go to Chicago in two hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, I, I, and, I, and that's what I was doing as a young guy to go buy clothes and buy jewelry, you know what I mean? Buying links and fangs and, you know, gold teeth and buying leathers and shit, air ones. I was doing that when I was a little nigga. We was getting rental cars and shooting out there. We was trying to be live. We was doing that, buying Sherlins and ABs and Kellys and shit. We was trying to be live. But as far as hip hop, I was a kid, man. You know what I'm saying? I cut my teeth internationally. I cut my teeth on the road. You know what I'm saying? Between Atlanta and New York and L.A. and Japan and, and Germany. You know what I'm saying? As far as being a professional artist, yeah, I cut my teeth throughout this world, G. Wow. No, that's a, that's a dope story, man. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Everybody has a... Everybody's road is different with, with the whole thing. So, you know, that's... It's, as I'm piecing it together, it's like, yeah, like... Because I know I like... I mean, for instance, I live in Pittsburgh now, but I spent, like... Last spent a while in Philly, right. same state, totally different. Two different cities. worlds, yo. Like Two Mars different worlds. And Two be different more worlds. Different. You be. know what I'm saying? Two yeah. different worlds. So that's just you know something you got to think about. Like you know, they say the same thing about New York, the same thing about LA. You could be in New York City. You know, a Queens guy might say I'm nothing like a Harlem guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's you know right there. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, it's real. Brooklyn guy might say, Nah, I ain't no doubt. I'm not from Brooklyn. I'm just you know like you yeah. know people take pride in where they from. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Course. Same I mean, thing in LA. You can go to LA in different neighborhoods to say we different. Where, we different. You know, so you can never make the mistake of just grouping everybody together because they're in a close physical location. You know what I'm you saying? Can, I mean, you but I can out, attest to that. You can pick out a Harlem kid. You know what I mean? In a minute, like hat. Fit it to mm-hmm. like halfway all. I mean, you flossed out, man. You could, you know, yeah. saying? you could pick a, you know, what I'm saying a Brooklyn kid. It's it's different. So yeah, it's different. It's absolutely. different. Absolutely. So yeah. I interviewed. Same uh, thing for Grand Rapids in Detroit. That's all I was saying that to say. What you know? say? What you say? I said the same thing for Grand Rapids in Detroit. Right. I, I was just saying all that just to say. Of course, that, yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 dead. Um. So I I uh I interviewed Fourth Disciple a couple of months ago. 
And uh, and I asked him, I said, I said, who are you rocking with uh, musically, MC wise? Your name came up. Mm. And uh, have, you, have you worked with him on anything? Fourth sent me some joints, and I don't think we never got any. We never got to. We oh, will, actually, we will. I mean, he said he wanted who he wanted to work with too. I mean, in yeah. terms of in terms yeah. of who he respected as an MC or whatever. So who yeah. you know, he, he he listed a lot of dark men too. He said, um, in terms of. But he mentioned you. He's like, he said, yeah, he said, this kid's nice. You know what I'm saying? So, well, uh, yeah. We for, my God, we're going to do it. We're going to definitely do it. Scary Hour is still the freshest shit ever made. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, still, to this day, the night, the night, what's up? The night the earth cried, that's still the freshest shit ever made. You know what I'm He's saying? Fourth is, a, fourth is a wizard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're going we gonna to get to all of that. We're going to get to it. He's ridiculous. How'd you link up with, with uh, drama? Uh, in Atlanta, you know, I mean, running around. I went to Clark. I went to school down here, to okay. college. And while I was in college, um, I linked up with Don Cannon. You know what I'm saying? And Cannon was like a guy who was, I don't want to say under drama, but drama was, you know, spreading out the resources and allowing Cannon to take part in what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? So Cannon was like, yo, wherever I go, I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take you with me. I was like, bet, let's do it. He was making the beats. He was DJing. And I was rapping like, on some real. You know, foundation hip hop shit, DJ and rapper shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I was the rapper. Kenny was the producer and DJ. And Drama was the plug at the time because Drama was older than us. We were still kids in college, and he was a grown man, just living and making his way through Atlanta. They had radio spots and doing the clubs, and they were doing their thing. So, Drama took a liking to Cannon and Cannon made sure I was a part of that. You know what I'm saying? So, I gotta tell people that a lot of interviews. I talk about this shit all the time. But yeah, my connect to that shit was through Cannon, man. You know what I'm saying? Drama just had more foot in the door to allow it to, you know, do what it do. Yeah, no, that's dope. What's the vibe down in Atlanta? What's it like? What, what, what was it like down right? I said to say when you were down there. I mean, is it different? I'm different? here right now. I got cribs down here. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm here right now. Um, But, I mean, Atlanta's every, like, Atlanta, Atlanta, I like Atlanta because you can do anything here. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever you're looking for. You know, you want to be... You want to be on the scene and, and rub elbows with the rappers and the actors and actresses and shit? Do that. You know what I mean? You want to go be somewhere quiet and be a family guy? You can go do that. You know what I'm saying? You want to get into any line of business, any line of work? You can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Atlanta is, like, open for whatever it is you want to do. But at the same time, like, what's going through now is getting, like, to my opinion, it's getting real saturated. There's, like, 100 people in line to do everything. That's a good thing if you're at the top of your hustle, the top of your, you know, your, your talent. You'll make it out here. You can make it out here. It's a beautiful place. You know what I'm saying? I like the black empowerment down here. That's, and that's been that's been a draw since the very, very first time I heard about coming to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see black people with ownership down here, and it's really cool. You know what I'm saying? I like that. This is a good place to, if you got a young, a young man or a young daughter, that a young, young woman you're raising at home, it's good for them to see, you know, all these black people in good positions and all that. So the love is good down here. I like it for the love. That's for sure. No, that's dope, man. That's 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 dope. That's what I heard. Like I remember, like a lot of people I knew in the late '90s were going to Atlanta. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, my man hit me up. My man hit me up like '99. He was like, "Yo, you gotta come down." He was like, "It's jobs." He was like, "I'm making All this." He's like, All "I'm right. making this." You know that? I got and the fucking the cost of living is sweet. Like they don't talk about that a lot, but I'm gonna tell you. Like the cost of living is sweet. You know, so I know guys. We got big mansions and shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, niggas is like 350, you know what I'm saying? 400, got the big, crazy shit. So I'm like, yeah, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, up top, it ain't like that. Yeah, son, three. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, so just if you, if you, if you just somebody who's serious about just living in, in real life, you can get that down here. If you want to live the pop life and be a celebrity, you can do that down here, too. They got a really good balance of that. It's a good place to be, man. Okay. 350 in Philly will get you a duplex and a shared garage and a shared yeah. driveway. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. I ain't talking about in the city, per se, but like you want to go to the burbs, you know, you want to get 30 minutes out of the city or something, you, yo, I see some crazy shit down here. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, it's a good place to be. Nice, nice. So, yo, I, I kind of got put on you to you and I'd probably say like, 2011, somebody was like, Willie the Kid. I, and I, it's a, I couldn't, you know, it's stuck in my mind. And so there's somebody's like, yo, you heard this kid, Willie the Kid? And I was like, no, nah, I ain't heard of it, but whatever. And then um, somebody played me some shit. I forgot what it was. 
And I was like, word, I hadn't I hadn't heard anything in a while. I was kind of out of the loop. But um, yeah. but what would you say your, your I won't say angle of steez is, but like I, I listen to your shit. I was been listening to it. I'm like, man, this is some real intelligent shit with a little sprinkle of street shit in, but it's like, so what's the cause yo, I when I the stuff I've been listening to, I'm like, yo, this kid is beyond fly. I gotta talk to this cat. Like this cat is just, you know what I mean? What's what, you know, so what's 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 Willie the kid steez, man? I don't even know, man. It's honest, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like I like 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 I grew up in front of the music. You know what I'm saying? Like when I like when I first started making music professionally. Like I'm talking, I ain't talking about the old like back in the day as a kid shit. But when I started making music professionally. I was a I was a lot. Um, I was a. I was focused on who I was and what I wanted to do, mm. but I didn't have as much life experience as I do now. You know what I'm saying? And I, through that, I literally grew up in front of the world in music. You know what I'm saying? Um, but my stage's always been what it's been about, though. You know what I'm saying? Like being a real direct person and being a man first. You know what I'm saying? And um, honoring morality. You know what I mean? Honoring certain codes and you know honoring respecting myself first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? Like Knowing what I came here to do, you know what I'm saying? I come from a long line of real serious people, you know what I'm saying? So I would never, you know, betray or never front on what I've been taught and what I've, and how I grew up, you know, for no situation, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the music always reflected those ethos, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was in the lab the other day, and I'm, I, I've recovered my first album that I lost in that fair, that fair raid, and um, listening to the music, me and my niggas, I'm sitting back like, yo... Everything I was talking about, I was like 20 years old, 21 years old. Everything I'm talking about, I'm actually doing all that shit right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like I always had that light on. Like I always knew what it was, what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? And I think the music, it's, that right there it actually just warmed my heart, my nigga, because when I played it, I was like, damn, this is a kid talking this shit. You know what I'm saying? And we really got into all those things that I said I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like I said, it's an honest situation. I grew up in the blue collar town. You know what I'm saying? Factories and people working hard and you know going out earning their money, like the real steak and potato type of town. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's where I grew up at. But my family came from the big city. You know what I'm saying? So I always had that that optimistic mindset about what it is I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? So between being able to chase these dreams and live this life and do all these things and make this money and tour the world and do all this shit, I was able to keep all of that shit in focus and project that through my music the whole time. So when you hear my music, whatever you take from it, you ain't you ain't got it mistaken. You, you take it exactly what I what I meant to put in there. You know? Word. That's what's up, man. I, I appreciate just even hearing that. That's just it's inspiring because it you know, like it you, you seem like you've been on the track. For, for a minute and, and knew what you wanted to do so it's like you, know, you can peel it back you know what I'm saying you can peel it all back it's right there right you know, you know and it's you know so it's a, it's a testament to hard hard work I mean was there any, was there ever any time though I mean because that 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 you were like damn is this gonna work or I mean like I mean what did you ever have any tough times going through this or has it been I can't say it's been all okay Man, it ain't never been all cake. It's always, you know, you got your ups and downs. But one thing about me, and my big brother told me this, you know what I mean? My pop told me this, my mom told me this, like, you know, we're not going to put all our eggs in one basket. Like, some people some people got the, you know, um, like Denzel said, right? I put it on my, my Midwest Willie project. Some people got the, the gift of long-term suffering. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to say it again, because Denzel killed that. He said, some people got the gift of long-term suffering. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people catapulted themselves to certain positions in music or otherwise because they didn't have nothing. That, it, was, it was either this or rock bottom. You know what I'm saying? And to those people, I tip my hat. You know what I'm saying? Because they had to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I was looking at this, this thing with Jay-Z the other day, and, and big shout out to the GOAT, man. Like, to be a billionaire, but a quarter of his income came from the gold bottle deal, the champagne deal. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, the yeah, music was a sliver of yeah. the pie chart. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's something that my people told me coming in the door. I mean, my brother first got his first deal and shot the video. 
he had a song with video Raekwon and all that. I was a kid. He wouldn't let me come to L.A. and be in the video. Because he got school in the morning. Nigga, go to school. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, people told me from the beginning, like, yo, you going to have to, your real life's going to have to make sense before you can be a fucking rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, my brother said that. My mom said that. My pop said that. People and my uncles, my cousins, nigga, like, nah. We're not finna be sleeping at the bus station trying to find a record deal. Like, we're not going to play that game. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? And again, I tip my hat to those who did that. But... Nah, that was never my angle, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never, I never had to beg or or, or, or or be on my be on my hands and knees to make no rap to make no rap song. You know what I'm saying? Like I take a lot of pride in that. You know what I'm saying? Like not that there's nobody who did that, but that was never my thing. Like right now, I, like my portfolio is so diverse. Right now, rap is just a piece of that. Right now, it's like it's a small piece to be exact compared to what I got going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy, but I always knew that. Like, the day I signed my record deal, I had to choose between going to law school or being a rapper that day. You know what I'm saying? So, I never, you know, I, I paid my dues. I worked hard. I, I wanted this. I prayed for it. I, you know, I appreciate everything I got for it. But my situation wasn't dire to where I, if I don't rap my hardest, then I can't eat food tomorrow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I thank the Lord for that. And I thank the people that, I thank the Lord for putting people in my life to give me that mentality coming in the door. Like, you're not finna be no, you're not finna come out here like that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, end of the day, like, my son got stamps in his passport. You know what I'm saying? Like, my son in private school. You know what I'm saying? Like, end of the day, if the rap don't never do shit, my real life is together, G. And I thank the Lord for that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, you know, that's bigger than anything you could ever say, man, because it's, it's, it's bigger than rap and you just gave a jewel, like, because that's really important. But to me, it underscores something else, man. It underscores that you came from a solid family, and it, yeah, and it, and it underscores yeah. it underscores the importance of having parents, both parents, and a, and a support system to to guide you the right way. And a lot of people don't have that. And it's like you yeah. have, and, and it's like that's what I'm. But I don't niggas that do got that right. They do got that, and they go do something different. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, you know what I mean? like. You got you gotta be you gotta be you gotta be receptive to the gems, man. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's an uncle, a brother, a cousin, a mom, a dad, or whoever, a big sister, whatever. Like if somebody's trying to you know help you, you gotta listen. If they trying to guide you, you gotta listen. Or mm -hmm. OG nigga from your neighborhood, like whatever. You gotta yo, you gotta. It don't matter, man. It don't matter what you exposed to. It don't matter how you grew up. It don't matter what you got in your corner. It don't matter if you don't take to the gems and apply the knowledge. It don't fucking matter, G. I knew niggas were more than me that got less than me. I knew niggas that got less than me that made that that made that made out well. Why? Because niggas applied the knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it boils down to. It's good to have those things, but you know, what's it to you if you're not putting it to use? You know what I'm saying? Of course. Yeah, you gotta you gotta use it. Otherwise, it's just. Useless, useless information. It's useless, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's just a waste of time. So, that's it. Yo, tell us about these power moves, man. I was on your page and I seen you with the mayor and and, and what's so you got the wine. Tell us about the wine venture first. Well, all right. So, um, I have a liquor company called Mochi Rouge Spirits. Okay. The first release, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sampling right now. It's the first release, Mochi Rouge Group Champagne. You know what I'm saying? So, this is our first release coming out. From the company, um, we got some other things coming: a rosé coming, a uh, red wine, a white wine. We got a bourbon coming, and we got some cognac coming for the hood. I know how my niggas want it. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing that for them, and um, want to do a vodka, want to do a tequila. I'm gonna do everything when it's all said and done. It's just the very first one that we're doing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, me and some close friends of mine uh, that I know from my town, I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna roll this whole thing out and make it happen, man. Um, Doing business in the city. I got the cocktail lounge, ambiance, GR, uh, four venue space, uh, four menus, kitchen, the whole wop, uh, dance floor, stage, VIP booths. In Atlanta you know or Grand saying? Rapids? In Grand Rapids, okay. yeah, downtown Grand Rapids. Probably about 300 people. We building it out right now, you know what I'm saying? I was just up there in some meetings, got our liquor license approved, it's going down, and that should be coming real soon. Um, and again, we're gonna feature our own champagne, our own booze in there, and all that. Where's that gonna be? Um, this, how can we get our hands on that? The, the, uh, this this would be out Fourth of July. You okay. know what I'm saying? Fourth of July. This would be this would, this is still Lake Market, so the Midwest for sure to be in Michigan, uh, Illinois, Indiana. I think we got Kentucky, 
Tennessee. I'm, I'm getting Georgia together right now because I want to, I want Atlanta to get it, and then soon we're gonna branch out and um get on the road, get on tour, so we can get the East Coast, we can get the West Coast, we can get it popping. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like I said, it's just just the first one to get us in the game. You know, I mean, we're gonna grow it from here. We're taking it from the bottom up. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, just excited about that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a producer with, uh, on PBS for the Langston Hughes documentary. Uh, my man Kevin Wilmot's directing it. He won the Oscar with Spike Lee just right now. You know what I'm saying? So me and my partner, Jonathan Jokes, we're producers on that. I'm getting that together right now. It's about to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And then we got um, GRUSA, the merchandise line. Uh, we basically do the merch and apparel for the city. We partner with the actual city of Grand Rapids to do the official merch. We're trying to get the store open uh, before Christmas. Me and my partner's working on that right now. So between the store, the bar, cocktail lounge, restaurant, the liquor deal, um, the PBS production, we working with that. A couple other things I'm about to do with this technology firm I just launched. I, I keep you in, in link with that as well. But yeah, it's getting real serious right now, man. Yo, that's so dope. I, I was like, man, this dude's profile, he's running out of space, man, in, in, his, in his bio. Yeah, man. So, you said know, it, man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. So, uh, tell us about the, the, the movie Fly. Michael said, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see it yet, but tell us about what, what, uh, what was man, the you got to go see I, that, bro. I um, see it. What was the idea? It's on, it's on YouTube just tonight. Just pull it up tonight. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's a film that I did with some guys from my town as well, some real creative guys. My man Scott Erickson, my man Kevin Brzezinski, uh, my man John Burroughs. Um, it's a story I wrote. Uh, I was honestly inspired by Prince Purple Rain. I was one of my favorite movies, you know what I'm saying? And I, um, I took that direction about uh, a guy who uh, who was hiding from himself, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? The mask was this thing, this, this symbolic uh, item that he was hiding behind. Um, I'm going to let you check it out. I won't spoil it for you personally, but if you haven't seen it already, go check it out. It's a really woven story about the idea of sometimes... Sometimes to find your way out of a situation, you gotta look within. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's the basis of the whole story. Everything you want, everything you need to go to that next level is just right here. You know what I'm saying? You gotta tap into it and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And that was pretty much the moral of the story. Uh, that's that's dope. I'm definitely gonna, definitely want to want to peep that, man. I mean, like, watch it tonight and send me a text after you see it, man. Email or something. Let me know what you think. I, I definitely want to. I'm gonna definitely check it, man. Um, I starred in it. I wrote it and I co-produced it. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's it's really a fucking great movie, man. What did you go to school for? Communications. Okay. Got gotcha. you. So the the thing that I saw with the with the mayor that was that was that the um that's the GRUSA uh, venture. Right? GRUSA brunch. Right, that, so was, that, was, that was the thing yeah. I saw with that, right? Okay. We're yeah. we gonna inspire by the Rock Nation brunch, honestly. You know what I'm saying? We said we got we got we can do that in our own town. You know what I'm saying? So the GRUSA brunch, but then also we wanted everybody to taste the champagne before it dropped too. So we got the rooftop, you know, downtown Grand Rapids fly shit. We had elected officials in there, some 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 guys from my neighborhood, some serious guys was in there, you know what I'm saying? Ladies was in there, like it was it was crazy. It was crazy. Well, and did. the whole idea was to just say, yo, it's a celebration for all the ventures we got going. I got a strong team. I got like three or four partners um, with the Motu Fouge. I got about four or five partners with the bar. I got a partner with, with the GRUSA thing, with the PBS thing. So I wanted to get all my people together and just do something for us and invite the whole city out to say, hey, man, we're pushing our shit forward out here, man. And come celebrate with us, you know? That's, and that's that's dope for a couple of reasons. One, um, you're still, you know what I'm saying, you're still doing your thing for your, for your city, you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's really... That's really powerful right there, you know? Like, and, and what I noticed was like, I like all the attention to detail that I saw, man. It looked, everything looked like super professional. And I, I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times artists and, you know, sometimes creative types cut corners with attention to detail. And it's like, it's about the, oh, the creative shit or whatever. But it's like, yo, you gotta be professional, especially when you're moving in different circles. You know what I mean? So I thought that was really, you know what I mean? Um, important. Yo, the, the details are the cornerstone of creativity, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, without the details, how do you differentiate? You know what I mean? How do you surpass? How do you brain? How do you, you know what I'm saying? How do you specify? You know what I'm saying? Right. And, like Nipsey said that in the rap. I had to be specific so niggas know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta do that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be, you gotta have those details in the forefront. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, the 
recent EP out, City Lights. That shit is crazy, son. Like, <laughs> that shit Good is luck. A, that Good shit luck. is a head. That's my homies out in Jersey, man. You know what I'm saying? Brothers Grimm, man. I've been, man, them brothers been keeping up with me for years, man. Like, for real. I finally said it's time to do it, so we did it. We made it happen, man. It's, That's a great project. I forgot about it. I recorded it, and it's been on a hard drive for a minute. I forgot about this shit, honestly. We pulled it back up and revamped it and got it together. Oh, this shit's kind of fire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous.